And I kind of wanted to show you my thought process when I get new plants. How do I process them? When do I put them in LECA? Do I wait till the spring? Do I only do it once a year? If these are some of your questions, stay tuned. Ty Constellation. So what I'm gonna do is put my meter down in there. Um, kind of down in the dirt, let's see. And if your moisture meter reads wet or green, don't, don't transfer it. Now, none of these are hard and fast rules. These are just things that have worked for me. So what happened with my Thai constellation is it got really dry, but it was a terrible day for me to uh, give it the attention that it needs. And that is the whole key for all of your plants is how many plants can you give attention, really good attention for the first four to six weeks of being in your home. Um, I find that if I acquire too many plants too quickly, um, I will lose one of them probably, um, at least one of them because I just can't give my plants the kind of attention they need. Now you're gonna see what kind of attention I'm talking about as I talk through some of my new plants and what I've done with them. So here is the Philogendum rugosum. I've already taken it out of the dirt. I've put it in LECA four days ago, five days ago maybe. Now, I'll take it out of dirt, I put it in LECA. Sometimes on this one, for instance, I put a little bit of moss on top, a little orchid moss. The reason I do that is see these extra roots right here, and but especially this root right, right there. I, I love to encourage those air roots. I feel like it's good for the health of the plant. And so the way I encourage air roots is I go ahead and I put a little bit of, of this moss on top and then I spritz it whenever I water the plant. Um, it kind of helps me notice the plant more too. If the moss is really, really dry, I kind of check it and say if the plant's dry. So just to encourage those aerial roots, I do moss right around, and sometimes it'll just be a little bit of moss right where I'm trying to encourage that plant. Because let's pretend I get root rot down underneath and I lose the bottom roots. If I have these aerial roots, my ship is not sunk and I can plant this in water and start again. So I just wanna kind of keep all the roots happy. Now this plant, the very first watering, what I've started doing is I have started watering it through, letting the water go at the bottom and then dry pot. I, I don't want this pot inside to have water. Now, you can hear it, it has water now because it's been dry four to five days and today when I checked it, I saw this. Can you see, let me take it out of its little cash pot. I have a tiny, well, I thought it was tiny. It sounds like a lot, but see this right here? That little white stubby. In four to five days, I got a white stubby. The white stubby is an encouragement to me to leave a little bit of water in the pot. Sometimes they won't get white roots coming out of any holes. You can't see anything for weeks, um, which is fine. That's why I need time. I need time to water and just not leave any water in the bottom. I'm finding if you just dump, I never put this much water in the bottom. I keep seeing this on Instagram and I'm just thinking, <gasps> are those roots rotting? Um, and your first watering is gonna be purified water, but no nutrients. Now, this guy, once, it's only been a few days, but once I see a little bit of root, I'll go ahead head and give it a little water. And this time I gave it a little gift in the water. Now I did not put nutrients. The gift on the second watering, the first watering was purified water. And I'm just kind of showing y'all what I do because I know you're curious. Um, so the second watering, what I did is I took a half a gallon of water and I used reverse osmosis water. That's just me and just so you know where I'm coming from. Then I use Epsom salt, this is kind of new for me, but I found that these new roots really like the Epsom salt and it helps them grow hardier, thicker, faster. 
So I do about a teaspoon of Epsom salt in the half gallon of water. And then I also do a about, this is eight cups, so eight drops of Thrive. You do not need to do either one of those things. I'm just telling you what I do. And then the other tool that I need is gonna be a stick, either a bamboo skewer, some kind of stick. And when I'm putting the plant down in LECA, I like to push on the LECA pebbles just to make sure there's no air pockets around the roots. So you wanna get them nice nice and compacted down in there. If it needs a stake, I will stake it. Now, the last, last thing I do, because this is a new plant, um, I want to, I didn't get to, I had several new plants on the very same day and we were busy. So I really didn't get to look underneath the leaves and examine them. Um, I do spray it with a spray for fungus and that kind of thing. All soap, spino sad soap. Um, I, it was $14 at a nursery. One bottle will last you several years and I only use it um, a lot of times when I first get the plant. This plant I noticed had some little like almost like snail trails on the underside of one of the leaves and I went into emergency mode. I wipe every leaf off. I spray it front and back and stems and sometimes the moss with my Spinosad soap. And so far I've had zero outbreaks of anything in my home. And I've had these plants, these are new plants, but my other plants I've had for a long time. But the Spinosad is my magic soap. I don't make neem oil and all that stuff. I just use the Spinosad. Um, okay, so that's that plant. Now I wanna show y'all another plant. If you see my Instagram, you know I took my Christmas, Christmas cactus, I divided them, and I went ahead and put them in LECA. Now, I can tell this one needs to be watered because the leaves are kind of sad looking. Christmas cactus also will lose their color. They'll actually get kind of like yellowish and less green. But I wanna show y'all, let's see. Okay, so. This is my sign that I can do a little bit more with this plant. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but let's see if it'll focus. Right in there. There's a little white root, one tiny new fingerling hair of a root poking out, okay? And there's only one, but what that tells me is you are allowed now to leave a little water in the bottom of this pot, okay? For me personally, I am too neglectful of plants and um, to overwater them from the beginning. Okay, this plant really needs water. So now what I'm gonna do for this particular guy is I have my second watering water ready. It's got a little bit of the Epsom salt and it has a little Thrive. I do about one finger's worth of water in the bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy down in there and he's going, thank you so much. I could probably do a little more water but I just want one finger, no more than one finger. Now, the other thing to think about is how tall did I put those roots? This particular plant, the roots are very low. I stuck them way down in the pot. I was doing what another person said to do with a Christmas cactus in LECA. And um, so I stuck them almost to the bottom with just one layer of LECA in the very bottom. Um, and so the, they're gonna get water right away. And I'm excited about these. I think they're gonna be okay and um, and I'm seeing new growth got in the last four to five days. It is still wet. It is still pretty wet. And I think it's wet from, well, I don't even need to check because I always look at the holes in the bottom of the pot and that dirt is really wet. So what I'm gonna do with this one and what I do with any new plant, especially if, if it's, 
in our house for the first time and it's the first four to six weeks, put this plant on heat. Um, 70 degrees is really all it needs to 75 degrees, but a warm pad underneath will will kind of encourage the roots to grow quickly, to push out roots, to grow faster. I feel like plants grow twice as fast if they have the warmth underneath their roots. So especially, now I can't provide warmth for every plant in my house. Once a plant has adjusted to being in my home and is happy and is thriving, I take them off of the baby bed, which is the warm mat with a grow light on top, and they go into their place that I kind of envision for them. But until that point, I really want them to do really, really well. Now you can tell, see this, how loosey goosey this is. I'm going to need to stake this. When I put it in, um, Lekka, I need to stake it, um, plants into Lekka. I'm thinking about, okay, how, what kind of stake it's going to need and what kind of growth it's going to give me. Um, and if a plant's not doing well, sometimes the roots just are too high in the leka. Those are little idiosyncrasies that you're gonna learn along the road as you put your plants in leka. This one's not quite ready, it's super wet. Um, so there's two happy places. One is gonna be on top of a refrigerator or a dryer or somewhere warm in your house where the warmth gets to the roots. And if you can provide that, um, and then mist the plants in the morning. You only need to do it for three, four, five weeks. It will make a stronger, healthier, happier, faster growing start for your plant. You wanna get your plant like really, really excited about your house. And then once it shows its roots are really pushing out, now you can kind of put it where you wanna put it after my shower or I'll take it at night and keep the curtain or door kind of closed. So it can kind of be sitting in that really high humidity all night long. Then in the morning, I move it to my heat mat with a light on top. My heat mat is not very large. I have a couple of small round ones I can put like underneath my Thai constellation. It will get a heat mat for probably two or three months because I want those roots to really aggressively push out. So this one, um, right now, what I'm doing with him is he goes in the shower with me at night and then onto the heat mat during the day. Now, um, still none of them are getting nutrients. He was dry this morning, but I'm not seeing the root activity. I just watered him, but I'm just seeing older roots. I'm not seeing root rot. The main thing I'm looking for is bright white new roots. Well, if I don't see that, when I water them, I don't let any water sit in the bottom. And it is a process, so again, I encourage y'all not to collect too many plants at once. Try to understand and know your limits. It is going to be very difficult for you because we haven't even hit spring yet. So when spring, when March 1st happens and April 1st happens, the floodgates are gonna open and there are gonna be really amazing plants at the nurseries, but just be patient. Just know I'm gonna grab my top three or two and then they will be there for the rest of the summer, but for sure the spring, there are gonna be some awesome plants. So the question of the day is, how soon after you get a plant do you put it in LECA? That's the question of the day. There's a plant from the vault. I don't know if you can see how sad and ugly this top is. I need to trim it back a little bit. And the lipstick plant, this particular one, has gotten new growth, it's gotten flowers. It just has, um, weed cannot seem to reach a good balance. And I've had this plant for six months. We have not reached a good balance. It's either I let it dry out too much which is my tendency, or I've watered it a little too much and it can't drink all the water. So probably on this plant, I could put it in a smaller pot and put the roots down in a little bit deeper. Stop eating the plant, stop doing that. Um, but what happens with me is I get a plant that I like more 
and I kind of count my losses. So if this lipstick plant is just doing okay, but I find another plant that I love, it's lush, it's flowing over, and it seems happier with the whole Lekka scene, um, then I will gift or throw away the lipstick plant. That's kind of what I do. Um, I don't strive with it forever. I'm keeping it for now because it does flower. I mean, it just flowered and it has some happiness going on. But even now, look at this really limp leaf. When you just feel like it's a bad boyfriend, they're just never happy. You can't say the right thing. You can't do the right thing. Honey, just get yourself another boyfriend. So I'm thinking Hoya. Um, the Hoya in this particular pot and this particular look would be a lot better marriage for me. It seems like the Hoyas do, they're a little sad at first and they, they're limp at first and then they just take off and they grow new growth and um, you know when they're sad. It's not this dysfunctional, um, passive aggressive relationship. So that's one of my plants from the vault. I have other lipstick plants. I'm still trying with them, but um, it's not my favorite plant in Lekka, I do have to admit. Um, and probably if I cared more about lipstick plants, what happened with me is I just grabbed a bunch of plants at the beginning, and then as I've gone along, I'm like, ooh, I like you, I love you, I don't like you as much as I thought I would. That's the relationships I'm working out with my plants right now. So that's my plant from the vault. And don't forget to comment, leave your question, answer the question of the day. How soon do you put your plants in Laka? Or are you just in a research phase right now? And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>